My name is Cheryl Riley. I'm the director of the Respect Life Office for the Archdiocese of Newark. And I want to welcome you all to this wonderful celebration today, celebrating 25 years of hosting Rachel's Vineyard Retreats right here in the Archdiocese of Newark. God is present and you see him crushing the stony heart, removing blindness. It's being privy. First front row seat, as a lot of people say, to a miracle on every retreat. Rachel's Vineyard <clears throat> is really such a bright light that needs to be shown. There is hope and there is healing for those who want it. When I did the Rachel's Vineyard retreat, it was like, this is where the Lord wants me to be. You know, it was just so clear. Yes, it is definitely about the babies, but it's also about the women and the men that are, that are hurt by this as well. I was seeing the healing and the, how people were brought to Jesus in a very powerful, intimate way. Rachel's Vineyard was my heart for 13 years. I think about what it would be like if I didn't go to church that day and look in that church bulletin and see that blurb. I suffered for 12 years after my abortion, looking for hope and healing, and here it was right in my own backyard. I was um, running a support group for women with eating disorders, and the subject came up about abortion one night because most of the women in our eating disorder group had histories of abortion and they were in distress about it. So I started one of the first therapeutic support groups, which um, was weekly. The grieving process was so much more beneficial to go through it in a weekend without the interruptions. It was just a time away that you could focus on this very difficult, challenging, and for many people, traumatic um, experience in their life and have support night and day so they can do the work and then get to the other side of the horror and find meaning in what's happened. And anybody of trauma needs to do that. And the meaning that's discovered is that relationship with the child that's on a spiritual level. The Archdiocese of Newark was actually one of the first that adopted Rachel's Vineyard as its outreach. We were always grateful for the role that they played and the role that Michelle Christophic played there. She brought it back to the famous Monsignor McGinnis, who was such a father to this program. When I became um, secretary to Monsignor McGinnis, because that's how I started out in the Respect Life Office, the first thing that he said was that he wanted to do some post-abortion healing work. He was like gung-ho, and I was like, Monsignor, you know, I've been youth minister for 10 years. I know what hard work it is to run a retreat. There's no way I want to do a retreat. So Monsignor McGinnis, in his wisdom, just let it sit with me for a while and very quietly said, you know, um, here's the information about those retreats. Maybe you want to find out about it. He never said to me, you have to do this or you have to do that. So I called Rachel's Vineyard and I got all the information. And what I found out was that in order to run a retreat, you first had to make a retreat. It didn't matter whether you were post-abortive or not. You had to experience what Rachel's Vineyard was all about. So we went down to Pennsylvania and we went on a retreat. One of the things that the women have to do on the retreat is they envision their child on Saturday. You know, Jesus brings their child to them and they actually get, during the meditation, they get to experience that, seeing their child. And at the end of that, they then get to tell, you know, share what it is they experienced. And this one woman said, I know it was my child. She had blonde hair and blue eyes and she looked just like me. And she looked at me and she said, Mommy, I, the abortion hurt me so much that I would do it all again because it brought you back to Jesus. At that moment, you know, the hair on the back of my neck stood up and I knew that this was something that God was calling me to. There isn't a day go, goes by that I don't think of the people that I met on those retreats. You just see Christ bring his light to bear in all of them. That's what a priestly life is all about, so I can't imagine anything more important than kind of being ministering, in that, bringing the sacraments to bear in that context. It's just uh, near and dear to my heart. And uh, I'm always, I've always been grateful to both Michelle, Cheryl's predecessor, and Cheryl herself for the good, good work that they've done. When I first learned about Rachel's Vineyard, it was right here in this parish, Queen of Peace. 
I walked into the pew and opened up the church bulletin and I saw a little blurb that said, are you suffering from an abortion experience? Hope and healing after abortion. And it was on that weekend that I was able to do three things that I could not do before. One, I was able to ask God to forgive me and fully, fully accept his forgiveness. Two, I was able to ask my child to forgive me and ask her and tell her how sorry I am for what I did. And three, I was able to forgive all those that were involved in my abortion decision. And that was hard for me. The hardest thing though was to forgive myself. One of the things we hear all the time when we talk about abortion and inviting people to healing is, I'm good, I'm great. I dealt with that years ago, I'm fine. Um, and I was one of those people. I called here multiple times, hung up, hung up, mm -hmm. hung up. When I came home that Monday after the weekend, I had been in this really dark pit for years. And then over the weekend, there was a bright light that came out and shone. And I was looking up, seeing that light. Now I had to climb up the stairs to that light. Mm -hmm and it takes a lot of work, as you know, Karen. A lot of work making amends with people, getting the help you need, uh, reconciling so many choices you made in your life. And for a lot of people, that's a scary thing. God led me to Rachel's ministry because I had never heard of the ministry before. I had no idea that there was anything, and like the Catholic Church to me would have been the last place I would have looked, you know, for, for help with this. And, you know, for years I said, it's, you know, I'm fine. I did what I had to do. And it wasn't until I realized I wanted to come back to my faith that, you know, the abortion just was like, there was that brick wall again. It's like, okay, well, how do I get past this? And, you know, and just, I remember going on the internet. I'm like, well, there's a site for everything. And there was this little tab about abortion. And I'm going, okay, let's get the lecture over with, you know? And when I, clicked on that tab, there was no lecture, and there was Rachel's Vineyard, and I was like, wow. The mercy of God is just undeniable, and when you really experience that one-on-one, -on -one, which we have, then we hope to share it with so many other people that, you know, this is available. We had a woman come on our retreat who was in her late 70s, early 80s, and she had a legal abortion. She would go to church and sit in the back of church every single day. Her daughter had had an abortion and did not want to go, you know, on a retreat or anything. She decided that it was time and she came on the retreat to grieve the loss of her child and her grandchild. And she was glowing on Saturday night after she came out of confession. One of the things I've come to see over many years in this work is that unfortunately a lot of times when people think of abortion, they think of a very contentious social issue, moral issue, spiritual issue. They think of rights, they think of people protesting. I don't really see it that way anymore. Uh, it really is an issue of damaged relationships. From the very beginning, you have, <coughs> you have the mother's relationship with her developing child. And, and, and part of the ways that she's intimately hurt by, by participating in the child's death is that relationship is broken, but it's a very intimate one, physiologically, emotionally, spiritually. The same with uh, the relationship with the father of the child. Very, very deep wound to their fatherhood, to their manhood, to their, to their sense of themselves. And I also saw how beautifully healing it was when they shared that grief and pain, and women who had been so hurt by men then could experience that healing as well. I'm glad that in this archdiocese, and you know, we, you know, we do mixed weekends. It's men and women; they're not separated. I think it just helps the the healing for women so so much, um, whether they realize it or not. When I uh, attended my weekend, there was one man on it, and I almost freaked out. Like, what is this a man doing here? But he was almost more affected than the rest of us women together because he had not wanted this for his girlfriend and he had no say in the matter at all, and he just felt so defeated. 
this message of forgiveness and healing that quite frankly many men and women had never heard. They just believed that God wanted to punish them. It's a sin, it's an unforgivable sin. And when people have that mentality, they live their lives as, as persons damned. And it doesn't matter what you do because there's, there's a great despair in that and a feeling like I can't dig out of this no matter what. So it's, it's really, a, it's been a beautiful opportunity for grace. There were days when I walk into my job and I can't believe that God has brought me this far. I went from being so broken to not wanting to live anymore and to be able to spread the message of hope and healing and to let everybody know how much abortion hurts. And God has given me so many blessings since that day. Our children in heaven are calling us Absolutely. for healing. I do believe that. There's a spiritual umbilical cord that comes down from the child to the woman, that that child or children are praying for that mother and father to seek healing. And that's the lifeline. And when we realize that our children have been these great intercessors, like the Holy Innocents, um, it's a call for us to, to want to meet them one day. That's what we're working for. We're working and striving, you know, to get to heaven and to meet our children. I think my daughter was praying for me long before I could even call her daughter. And, uh, you know, and that is comfort now, too, you know, to like when I need prayer. Having it as part of the Archdiocese is an essential part of the mission of the Archdiocese. If we're about bringing people closer to Christ, sometimes that happens in just sharing the joy of the gospel to someone in a parish setting or something like that. Other times that has to happen through, through healing or through forgiveness or seeing uh, Christ does still love them. Because often when people go through abortion, there's um, the blinders come on and they can't see that and it's kind of overwhelmed by fear or panic. And then after the abortion, there's, there's so much guilt and shame that takes that over. You have to kind of open their eyes a little bit to know that God's love is still there for them. And that's what happens in Rachel's Vineyard. The relationship with the Archdiocese of Newark, this uh, initially with Michelle and, and now with Cheryl and all the wonderful people and clergy and deacons that were involved in the ministry, I think we're very instrumental in helping the church to gain trust in Rachel's Vineyard and be open to it. And that's been a tremendous blessing and uh, we're, we're very grateful for that. We praise God for that. Congratulations on your anniversary. I'm pleased to offer heartfelt congratulations to the leadership and staff of Rachel's Vineyard as they mark this silver anniversary milestone. The blessing of hope, the spiritual and emotional healing that Rachel's Vineyard has provided to more than 1,200 people in the Archdiocese of Newark these past 25 years cannot be overstated. The Archdiocese of Newark's Rachel's Vineyard program is proudly the longest running diocesan program in the world, committed to helping bring Christ's message of healing to those who have been wounded by abortion. I have participated in these retreats, and I can tell you that at Rachel's Vineyard, peace is found. Life is restored. A sense of hope and meaning for the future is rediscovered. I'm grateful to everyone involved with this ministry and look forward to working together in the continued mission of reconciliation. May God continue to bless you and your vital mission. This is a wonderful day. This is a wonderful celebration. I can't thank the Archdiocese of Newark enough, Cardinal Tobin for continuing to support my office, my ministry, and just to support everything. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for continuing to support this ministry. Thank you to my friends and my family, especially my husband who has put up with me since day one, because I don't really think he knew what he was getting into marrying a post-abortive woman. Thank you, and thank you for coming today, and God bless.